born in Auckland, New Zealand. I was the sixth of seven siblings. When I was, I think, six, moved to Melbourne, Australia. We moved, I guess, for um, better life and better opportunity. I felt like we settled into Australia quite quickly. Um, although tough at times, it was, it was nice that uh, you got six other siblings and, and two parents to, to roll around with. You're sharing your room with your three brothers and, uh, um, and your sisters are sharing another, another room and um, you know, you're coming home and having uh, $5 chips, uh, it comes in a massive thing and that's all, all of us fed, you know, so it's like we got by um, the best way we could and, uh, and I'm grateful for that. My family are super important for me because um, the values they instilled in me uh, to be the man I am. I was obviously second youngest and um, just looking up to my older brothers and sisters and the way they went about um, their lives and what they did. For me, that's, that's something that always uh, you never forget. I think it keeps you really grounded and real to know uh, where you come from and what you've done. The sacrifices and the family bond that you have is, is always going to be special. Being a Pacific Islander, I uh, got into rugby when I was probably 10, uh, playing with my brother that's uh, a year and a half older than me. By, I guess, 14, 15, I was probably pretty good at rugby and I was like, it could be okay. And then I sort of progressed on and, and found, found my way through. Just before the 2006 Under-19 World Cup, um, um, lost my father to liver cancer in March. Um, that year and that was a really, really tough time to try and decide whether you're going to the tournament. Sat down with my brother and my, my mom and um, yeah, they were both pretty keen for me to head away and um, I guess they said that that's what my dad would have wanted and at the time when you're grieving you're like, how do you know what dad wanted? Like, you know, he wants me to be here with him, like I'll need to be here and they're like, um, no, like we want you to go so yeah, we went away on that and um, yeah, thankful that I went on that, like that tournament was special because um, obviously the hardship that I was going through and then to be able to win the competition was um, a, a massive reward. I felt like that was probably career defining for me to be able to go to that tournament. I got back and I got a contract with uh, Brumbies. Like I think if I never went on that tournament, would I still be in Melbourne today just trying to find work or doing uni or something? But I believe that I was meant to go in that tournament and um, perform and play well and then get a get a contract out of that was uh, I guess the, the biggest bonus out of all of it. I uh, played um, four seasons at Brumbies and I was had so many setbacks through injuries. Finally got an opportunity to represent Australia in uh, 2013 British and Irish Lions Tour and obviously to be called into the squad first was an amazing feeling and then to be named to play the first test and know that you're going to debut. Um, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't hold back my excitement. And then kickoff went and I was ready to go. Um, first line out of the play, Jonathan Davies runs short and I'll go to tackle him and wake up in the stretch of the next minute. Um, and not, not the way you want a debut to go, but getting taken off, I was like, Le leave me on, leave me on, I'm all right, I'm okay. And the doctor was like, Mate, you've just been snoring the last five minutes. And I was like, okay, take me off. <laughs> well, we wish you well. Disheartening, but then I see my family after and still the pride um, that they had and was, was amazing, you know. It's, uh, they were yeah, still full of joy, proud that they, their son, their brother, their uncle or whatever was a, was a wallaby, you know. Um, no one can take that away from you, whether it's one minute or not. Um, and that, that to me I'll hold, hold really high, as disappointing as it was, um, I look back and that was special. Wallaby Christian Leliofano. Christian Leliofano. Christian Diagnosed with leukaemia. Leukemia. 2016 I was um, probably through the June series, um, I was just feeling a little bit off. I didn't know yeah, what was going on and sort of just tried to push through training and that and I just got tired and was getting worse and worse and I couldn't shake a cold or do anything really and I just had my son who was two months old. People thought that's probably why I was so run down and tired like just sleepless nights and all that kind of stuff and then I was trying to do fitness and training and um, started to have burning sensations in my hands and my 
feed and I was like, like something's wrong, I don't feel right, this has never happened to me and went off to see the doc and he told me just to go for a test, he thought I caught a virus or something and um, went for a blood test and I walked in his office and he explains all the blood counts and that and drops the, uh, you have leukaemia word on you and I was like, like such a heavy word, you know, it's immediate thoughts, I just switched off and he kept talking and like you just hear leukaemia and like, oh man, that, that's not good for anybody. And then I had to pack my bag and go to hospital. Went into hospital and the, well, I found out Thursday afternoon, I was in Thursday night and started chemotherapy on Saturday morning. And as soon as I got to hospital, it was just all about how, how am I going to get better? How can I get better? And then trying to just stay positive for trying to get your best outcome. I think my faith kicked in massively as well. Believing in um, God's plan, believing in what he had in store for me and um, understanding that whatever it was that I was going to go through, I wasn't alone. I wasn't alone and um, each night I'd pray, each night I'd pray, every morning I'd pray and it almost became like meditation for me, you know. There's only so much energy you have in a day and when you spend it worrying, when you spend it stressing, what room do you have left to be happy? And at the end of the day, you just want to be happy and whether um, I was going to make it through it or not, I, I wanted to make sure I was positive and happy and made sure people felt that love around me. To have my son there and knowing that, um, yeah, I think there was times where if he was sick or if I was sick, like we couldn't have contact because it, it could make me um, worse. That was a, a real drive for me as well, is that I needed to be a father to Jeremiah. Like there was no way he was going to grow up with without a dad and um, that motivated me so much. Um, just to see him like lie there and smile, like whether I had hair or not, whether I had eyebrows or not, um, he'd smile at me exactly the same. And like, that to me was a, a true gift. It made me think about how my mom was looking at me, you know, um, and the way that she was like, it, probably hurting, hurting so much, but I, I knew I had to smile. I knew I had to be happy around um, all the people that, that showed so much love to me. I guess it changes your perspective in, in life. Getting the all clear from the doctor to know that, oh, I could try and get back to work. When I reached that goal in, um, Super Rugby um, in the quarterfinal was, was special. Just to run out and to leave the last, well, I think it was 11, 10 or 11 months behind you and know that um, you get to do what you love again was an um, amazing feeling. Played the game and we lost and then I was like, oh, where to now? Like I'm back playing rugby but um, our season's finished and then my agent spoke about Ulster. Everything sort of worked out well enough that um, I got an opportunity to bring my family over here and and that was probably our best decision we've made in such a short time as a family to be able to um, move a whole way across the world. Again back to my, my partner and my son to, to give up what um, everything they had back home to, to come over and um, help, help me live out another dream is yeah, something I'm grateful for. And then arriving here, uh, the Ulster people have been absolutely incredible and the Ulster team and yeah, very, very special. Um, feel the views because of how they welcomed me here and um, made me feel at home. So excited to get back to Super Rugby and the Brumbies and hopefully take back what I've um, learned or um, improved from in my game and, and as a person. But before that, I think it's just been about enjoying every day here, enjoying um, um, what's left of us, uh, what's been an amazing experience. I think rugby for me has been amazing. It's given me so much platform, and but uh, it's never going to define who I am or, um, you know, it's always going to be about staying grounded to the people that make you um, get up each morning to, to be the best you, you can be, you know, and I think the world will be a better place. I think when you've got people that are happy and cheerful and um, trying to make a difference to someone's life to make sure that they're okay, um, that they're happy and um, I think is, is, is special, you know, and I think if I can um, inspire people, um, I guess give people some, some recognition of that, then yeah, hopefully it hits home. to bring that one around, pearls it around, beautifully
George Koilele of Canada. has judged it to perfection. Carry for Ian Henderson. And Lele Fano and now Darren Keir back after injury. Lovely, lovely. And they're going to score here, Ulster. Tommy Bow on the inside for Lele Fano. And that was maple syrup smooth.